Hi, I'm Gary Bounton and welcome to another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month I'm going to show you how to create an animated bouncing ball using fills, shapes, and transformations that all conform to the shockwave standard, in other words, flash animations. But do indeed go to the zone and check out the specifications for shockwave animations because there are some things that you can and cannot do and I've listed them on Zara Zone's tutorial page for February 2012. Why? Because someday you're going to want to create animations of your own. If you've never experimented with Zara's animation features, you're going to like this one. Promise. Uh-huh. Come on. You're going to build this animation in a special animation file, but for now, just press Ctrl N to create a default document in which you'll build the actor, the ball that's going to bounce. With the ellipse tool, hold Ctrl and drag, and then choose the fill tool. Choose Circular. Circular fills are legal in Shockwave animations. Start your drag at about 11 o'clock and drag down to about 5. White is an OK color for the fill start. Open the color editor and choose a medium blue for the end color and then double click the control line to add a color stop. Make this a slightly deeper blue. The effect is a cache light, a secondary light source, and it makes round objects look rounder. Let's decorate the ball now with a few stars. Choose the Quick Shape tool, choose five sides on the info bar, and click the Star Shapes button, then drag the shape. Let's fill the first star with yellow, and then with the Fill tool, drag on the face of the star so a linear gradient from white to yellow is made. We're doing this because the star shading should match the underlying ball's shading, so the ball is a little lighter on top, so the overlaying star should be too. To make two stars, let's drag and drop a duplicate, and then fuss with the gradient handle here. Make the top darker than the bottom. By the way, a linear gradient can have up to eight unique color stops in Shockwave files. And let's create a third star. Color it up appropriately and position it. Now with the selector tool, hold shift to additively select and get all three stars, press control G to group, and now I'm going to distort this group using the envelope function of the mold tool to make it look as though the stars are conforming to the shape of the ball so that they're on the ball and not just above it. Let's click the circular envelope preset. Now I'm going to simplify this group to remove the dynamic mold property. Choose a range, convert to editable shapes. An envelope is a special effect, and shockwave files don't like special effects. To trim the stars to the ball, select all, control A, and then press Q to make a clip view from the bottom circle shape. What remains to make this ball a character in an animation is to name it. Don't laugh. In flash files, there is a stage, the document, and actors, and you need to name the ball, so you right-click over it and choose names, and name the ball something clever like ball. Flash animations are created by defining keyframes, points of extreme actor changes, and then Zara tweens these keyframes. Okay, actor 1 needs actor 2 to play against, and this will be its shadow. Flash animations can only work with flat transparency, so to make a soft edge shadow, you make a blend of two flatly transparent shapes. I'll create two semi-transparent ovals, one smaller and one larger. We'll want to go to wireframe quality view now because it's real hard to find mostly transparent shapes to drag the blend tool from and to. Now that the link's been made, go back to high quality view and up the number of steps to about 12, and the next step is critical to animating the shadow. Because it's a dynamic blend shape, the flash animation engine is going to get confused by this non-standard effect and mess up this blend when you try to scale it. So you need to clip the shadow to an invisible clip view shape. Create a large ellipse over the shadow, give it no fill and no outline, and then press Ctrl B to put it to back. Marquee select the blend and the invisible guy and then press Q to make the clip view. So let's name the actor now. Ball Shadow is very inspired to do this. Before we open up a new animation document, the stage for this action, put the shadow clip view group to back, Ctrl B, and then position the shadow slightly to the right of the ball. Got the actors? Great. Let's take a look at the script now. Anatomy of a bounce. 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 Frame 1 is the star position for our hero, the ball. Note the size and position change of the shadow as the ball moves, okay? In frame 2, the ball descends and hits the ground plane. The shadow moves toward and beneath the ball and it gets larger because it's closer to the parent object. 
Frame 3 is the squash frame in a squash and stretch cartoon animation, this one. You don't have to do a lot with the shadow size, but get the relationship, the distance between the ball and the shadow right in this frame. The ball distorts as a reaction to its impact. Frame 4 is the stretch part. The ball releases its energy and travels upward. What you can't see in this video is I'm holding shift when I scale the ball which, for example, scales both the left and right side when I drag on the left or right handle. The shadow needs to go up to the right here also. In frame 5, the ball regains its shape and starts heading downward after expending its energy. Now, frame 5 may look like frame 1, but it's not. This animation will loop. Frame 5 returns to frame 1 over and over as the whole thing's played, so frame 5 and frame 1 cannot be duplicates of the animation, or it'll pause, and we don't want this. Animation cycles need to be seamless, so when you're building this, you might consider showing rulers in Zara. Control L. So, let's get to animating now. Copy the ball and shadow for your existing document and then choose File, New, Animation. The animation gallery will appear and you have a new page, but the page is too small for this tutorial. Press Ctrl Shift O to display options and on the Page Size tab make this 640 by 480 pixels, which is standard definition television size. Press Ctrl V now to paste the two actors into the document at frame 1 according to the animation gallery. Scale them down so if you want, the actor can have a background. Now, double click frame 1 to bring up properties and make this frame 0.2 seconds instead of half a second. Click flash options and make this movie 30 frames per second. Think ahead. This animation can make a nice video file and digital frame rates for movies are 30 frames per second. Now that frame 1 is set up, click copy and a copy is now your current frame 0.2 seconds into the animation. Rearrange the ball and its shadow to conform to that frame 2 you saw in the anatomy section earlier. Click copy and this is the the squash frame, so adjust the shapes, take your time, and when you're done, click copy, and frame 4 is the stretch part. This needs a little finessing. And then click copy. And we have frame 5 now. Make the shadow a little larger, bring it closer to beneath the ball, undistort the ball. Now that you have five frames, preview it. It looks pretty good, but there's a hesitation as the animation loops, and this is technically unavoidable with Shockwave files to have zero rewind time. But you can hide most of the damage by double-clicking frame 1 and knocking down the playtime to 0.1 seconds, and do the same to frame 5, and you'll notice that the animation is more fluid now. Save this file as bouncingball1.zar and then save it again as bouncingball2.zar. What do you say we add a background to the animation now? Please say yes. Diner JPEG is available on ZaraZone's February tutorial page. Click frame 1 on the animation gallery and then choose File, Import, and import the diner image. Right click and name the background. Press Ctrl B to put it to back and then press Ctrl C to copy it. Click the Frame 2 title on the Animation Gallery and then press Control shift v to paste in place so the background doesn't move between frames. Put it to Back, Control b and do this for the three remaining frames. That looks pretty classy now, doesn't it, with the semi-transparent shadows and all that? You can export this file. File, Export Animation, and choose Animated Flash at any time. But wait! There's more! There's a reason why the file is as large as it is. Open BouncingBall1.zar now and you'll see that any animation built in Zara can be exported not only as an AVI file, but as an AVI file with an alpha channel with transparency. So choose File, Export Animation, choose AVI from the Save as Type drop-down list, and then click Options. Choose Uncompressed, because only uncompressed files can be saved with transparency. Click the Make Background Transparent checkbox, click Close, name the file, choose your destination, and then click Export. Now look at this. You can hand this file to anyone who owns a high-end video editor or composition suite such as After Effects and the editing software recognizes this. I'm using red as the background here to show you that the ball is indeed floating in this video because even the best artists can't see transparency. 
and I've also imported the diner and another image and some sound effects. The neat thing here is not just recreating what you've done in Zara in another program, but how you can integrate Zara exported work with files generated from other programs and even digital cinematography. Zara plays nice with other programs and the results are totally professional, and this is the kind of stuff you do in Hollywood. Thank you.